I hope your week is going well. Um, I am just here sipping. Of course, what, what else would you expect me to be doing first thing in the morning? Actually, <laughs> you know, I always do blog a lot first thing in the morning to get the blood flowing. I've been doing her 100 ab challenge. OMG, it's intense. I have been, I'm on day four today. I didn't start it on January 1st because I didn't realize that it was going on. But I'm on day four and I already, I swear, I already see and feel a noticeable difference in my abdominal core strength. Highly recommend it. They're very short and very painful. Uh, they're very effective uh, exercise exercises for your abdominals uh, and very intense. But she gives you a modification if you if you're a beginner. Uh, she gives you a modification uh, to kind of get you started. So I I love her videos. They're so so exciting to watch and I love that they're really quick because in the morning I don't. I don't do those videos really for the intention of getting my workout in for the day. It's more just to kind of get my get myself up. And so that's a perfect amount of time. And then, you know, at the end of the day, that's when I go for my main workout. But yeah, those little, this little hundo challenge is, is pretty intense. That combined with those Body by Brooke discs that I got in my Winter Fab Fit Fun Box, I've been using those intermittently and I really, really enjoy those. There's even a little workout on the FabFitFun site. I wish it were a video. It's just like a PDF showing the different abdominal exercises and different exercises that you can do with the discs. I wish it were a video, but um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with those things. Yeah, so that has been, that has been amazing. Skincare update in terms of the Pyongyang Yule. Um, okay, so I'm just going to tell you guys that this is amazing. Uh, the acne cream. I don't know why it's called acne, but uh, this is one of the uh, gel humectants in the lineup that I layered on my face in that routine. And I actually finished this. It has niacinamide in it and then uh, root extracts. I wish it didn't have the rosemary in there. That is in a lot of skincare products I'm noticing. Even the, uh, many skincare products that claim to be fragrance free have that. And I don't know what the deal is with the rosemary extract, but it doesn't seem to be bothering me. But I, if you have fragrance allergy, I would really, really caution you to avoid it. But <laughs> anyways, that aside, I love this stuff. It is amazing. And I'm just gonna come on here and say that it is, it is superior to Bee Hydra. This is the empty. I hold on to the bottle because it was so expensive. I feel the need. I feel like by and large what I was paying for is this like little tower. So I hold on to it. But this also has niacinamide and it has a bunch of like fruit stuff in it. I think this is superior. I see such a substantial brightening effect with this. And there was a little bit left in here. And I tried it the other day just to kind of compare the two. This is, this is superior. I went ahead and ordered another one. So that's a little update on that. Also from Kyung Kyung Yule, I adore that moisture rich ampule goo. Oh my gosh, that is, I don't, that is just, that's just a hydration intensifier. That blows anything in Drunk Elephant out of water. I don't think I mentioned this in the video, by the way, of the Pyong Kyung Yule, but it's all cruelty free. Um, so those of you seeking cruelty free skincare, I should have mentioned that, I forgot. But this product I um, am also almost finished with, and I would say of the lineup, uh, this is a little underwhelming. I wouldn't go for this. It's their Ceramide uh, Moisturizing Cream, uh, Addo Cream. It's a light lotion and it's got ceramides in it. It's got a good ingredient list. It's not, it's not a bad moisturizer. I was just kind of underwhelmed by it. It, uh, it, what, what else can I say about it? Oh, I know what I was gonna tell you. I prefer the Causerex Nourishing Rice Spa Overnight Mask. While the ingredients are different, the brightening effect that I see with that as a light uh, lotion is, is far superior to this. Um, so I think I would swap that out for this in that lineup that I showed you in that routine I, I came up with. I think I would swap it out for that because they're, the they're, the, they're the exact same consistency. Lightweight, 
lightweight lotions. Um, so yeah, um, this is not bad. I just don't think it's worth it. This is a little on the expensive side for all of their products. I didn't think it was worth it. But this is, this is one of my favorites. This and the Moisture Rich um, Ampule, Ampule, amazing, yeah. Blows this out of the water. But a little beverage update for you guys. I kind of went on this tangent one night. I got, somehow something reminded me of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I love, love that book, that series when I was a child, and I still do. In fact, I think I might like to reread it sometime. Um, but something reminded me of that, and it got me thinking about Turkish Delight and how I like the taste of Turkish Delight. And I kind of wanted to use, oh, I know what it was. I was watching Chopped, and one of the ingredients in their basket was rose water. And so I was like, I want to start using rose water and stuff. And so I went on the interwebs, and I was like looking for vegan recipes and stuff with rose water. And I actually came across some, some um, articles on PubMed talking about this rose Damascus and how it's uh, supposedly rich in polyphenols and like a potent antioxidant source. So I got, you know me and my like functional beverages. I got like really into it. And I found this pure rose nectar and got myself some. And I've just been putting a teaspoon of it. It's Bulgarian rose. I've just been putting like a teaspoon of it in my water, but I want to try making a smoothie bowl out of it. It's pretty good. If you like, if you like Turkish Delight and rose flavored things, you, this is a good, this is really good. It's uh, a little on the pricey side, but it equates to like a dollar a tablespoon. But I've just been putting a teaspoon like in a water like this and it gives it a nice like, it doesn't taste like perfume. That's what I was wondering. Like, is this gonna taste like perfume? Cause in Chop there, like you can really go, you can really go too strong with the rose, uh, with the rose flavor. It doesn't taste like perfume at all though. It tastes um, just like a nice, it has a slight, like a floral undertone. If you like floral, kind of floral fruity teas, um, I think you would like this. Uh, so I'm excited to, I kind of want to try it like in a, in a, like a cram, maybe a cranberry tea, some sort of fruity berry tea, putting it in. I think that'd be nice. Um, oh, rose hip tea. I bet it would be really good in rose hip tea to bring out the, bring out the kind of fruitiness. But yeah, I've just been putting it in a teaspoon of it in my water instead of, uh, cause I ran out of my, um, I ran out of my lemonade packets. So I've just been putting a, a teaspoon of it in my water and I've been rather enjoying it. It doesn't have any sugar or anything. It's just, uh, what is it? It is just rose, uh, rose extract and a rose oil. Zero calories, no sugar, no additives. Born in Bulgaria, made with love in California. Plus, I just think it looks really cute over here with my, here, let me move my, this is kind of a disaster, but I think it looks cute here with my brown Betty and my, my cherry blossom theme here. I need to tidy this up, but yeah, I like that. So I've been enjoying it. Well, hey guys, what's up? It is, late afternoon and I'm headed out for errands. I am officially Texan enough that it is, or Houstonian enough, that it is, I don't know, 50 degrees out, sunny, clear skies, gorgeous day, not a zero wind chill, and it's freezing to me. <laughs> I am wearing the uh, that long sleeve <clears throat> shirt. I'm wearing that uh, a polar a polar vest, and I'm wearing my jacket. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I'm laughing because once upon a time, uh, you know, when I lived in Colorado and New York, uh, I would have I would have considered this uh, spring weather. This is spring weather, <laughs> but it's it's officially winter here. I love I love not having to deal with with winter winter weather. So update on the bathroom situation from last week. I, uh, my um, apartment building complex, they have been, they have been so stellar in communication of this bathroom situation. Uh, if you're at all confused, check out last week's vlog. But basically I, I had to have a plumber come to uh, remedy the pipes that were draining my toilet. Uh, and 
and they did very quickly and I was surprised at how how quickly they got the plumber scheduled and arrived and, and you know were they were on top of it, suffice it to say. But if you recall from last week, uh, the next step was for them to come in and repair the tile, which they did. Uh, and like I said, their communication with me has been superb. I have had to do nothing. And then, then much to my surprise, they called me um, the morning after they came and repaired all of the tiles. They called me uh, like late morning after, after the fact. They're like, oh, we're gonna send housekeeping to your apartment to pick up the mess. I was like, what mess? Because there was some there was some grout dust in my bathroom, but the plumber was pretty tidy, and then the you know there wasn't there wasn't really any mess. It was just a little dusty in there. Nothing that a nothing that a a wipe down could remedy. Yeah, so I was expecting the so I was just expecting the housekeeper to come in and wipe down like my bathroom countertops, maybe wipe up the floor or something. But no, she straight up came in there and mopped not only the bathroom floors and like like deep cleaned my bathroom, she also mopped my the little hallway that goes to my bathroom and my entire kitchen and wiped down my kitchen countertops. I'm like, whoa, talk about going above and beyond. Like they they were my they were plumbing, you know, the plumbing issue was in my bathroom, not in my kitchen. And, you know, not really not really tracking anywhere else. Like there was definitely no reason for her to go go to that that degree of, of cleaningness here. She went above and beyond is what I'm trying to say. And I was, I was taken aback. Um, you know, they put down, they put down paper for the, plumber put down paper and that's what he walked on. So it's not like he was tracking dust back and forth. He's, he's very tidy. Um, but she came in and, and really did a good job cleaning my, she mopped my kitchen floor. I was like, Thank you. And I was taken out, to, you know, caught off guard. I wasn't there. And I came in um, as she was leaving and saw that she had done all of this. And I was taken back. I didn't have any cash on me at the time. And, you know, in retrospect, I am thinking to myself, I should have tipped her. Um, this is what I hate about, um, you know, I am, I was born and raised in the United States, I'm, you know, an American. And one thing in this country that continues to confuse me is the practice of tipping. Uh, it's never, it's not as straightforward as it, as it seems. Like, I know that the, the housekeeper deserves a tip, um, and I'm pretty sure they didn't tell her to clean the, to clean the, the kitchen like that. I don't know if she was doing that in the hopes of getting a tip. Um, I wanted to tip her, but I, you know, I was taking, taking off, taking off, you know, I didn't have any cash on me, and, you know, she kind of left quickly as I was coming in, like, oh, let me get out of your way. And uh, so I'm gonna, you know, get a tip together and, and leave it in the in the office for her. But yeah, the practice of tipping in the United States is like, it's not something that, that you, you know, other countries do. And it can be annoying as stink. Um, I don't begrudge service people of, of a tip. I totally, totally want them to, to earn, to, to get their, get their, their payment. It's not that, I, you know, I have no problem. I have no problem actually tipping the service person, giving them, giving them what, their payment. But what I hate about the, the culture of tipping is the ambiguity behind it. Like, is this person um, making a base salary that is, that is reasonable? Or is this person making the like, quote, server salary where they're getting like a dollar an hour and they rely on your tips as income? That, you know, I would just appreciate that to be, appreciate that as being more transparent. Like, for example, when you go to a restaurant here in Houston, there are two different flavors of restaurants. You know, one type of restaurant is more casual. You go up to the counter, you order yourself. You don't really have a server or anything. Then they have more sit down restaurants, which I don't really go to. So I guess this doesn't affect me, but I do go to them for um, the monthly derm meetings. Um, and they, ha they have, uh, not only to have, you know, waiters and that's pretty straightforward. You're going to have to tip the waiter. They're like the waiter's not getting, getting a real, real salary. And so that's pretty straightforward. But they also have valet parking, which I detest. That is another, I detest valet parking because I don't wanna wait for somebody to go and get my car for me. 
it, it, it annoys me. But what I, what bothers me even more is that they have this valet parking and they will have a huge sign on the front of the restaurant that says free valet parking. But I'm thinking in my mind, like, is the valet, does the valet, is the valet like, like the, like a waiter in that he relies on tips? I'm almost certain they do. So it's not free valet parking. You have to tip the valet. Otherwise the guy's not getting paid, you know? So in effect it's, yeah, free valet, free valet parking for the restaurant, but not for, you know, free valet parking for the restaurant who's not really paying the, the valet to stand out there in the rain and cold and, you know, walk back and forth and get your car um, for you and park it and, and all of that. So that, that annoys me. I was just like a little bit more, I was just like them to be more transparent because even if the server's getting paid or the, the service person is getting paid a, a salary to live on, then, you know, in the true spirit of tipping, if they go above and beyond, then you would leave them a tip in addition to what they're already getting paid. But when, you know, the, the culture of tipping in this country is basically you tip because you're, you're, you're paying the guy. You're paying the guy serving you. That's that's the part about it that that is weird and probably weird to people who visit. And we're just getting used to it. But like, if you go to a restaurant, for example, and you don't tip the waiter, they're not getting paid um, for for the work that they did for you. So they're not, you, you know, they're not getting, they're not really getting paid. And it's rude uh, and bad behavior. Like you, sh you, yeah, you need to tip. Some people don't tip tip waiters and I, I I can I can't you know I can't do that um, you know I always tip the waiters the servers people but I swear I'm sure there are times in my life where I have not tipped where I was supposed to just because it's ambiguous you know like for example when you go and get your hair cut you're supposed to tip the um, the person who cuts your hair and you're also supposed to tip the person who washes your hair sometimes, depending on the salon. But other salons won't allow you to tip. They'll have a, quote, no tipping policy. It's just com incre incredibly vague. And, you know, I, I've lived here my entire life. You know, I was born, born, raised here, you know, never lived anywhere else. And I, it stymies me time and time again. And it always, it's one of those things where, like, you could Google some sort of etiquette book. You know, you could read a book on etiquette, and it would probably tell you what to do in certain situations. But, like... Who has time to, to do all that? And it's, you know, it's always these situations where you're caught off guard and you can't be like, oh, let me Google whether or not I need to pay you. <laughs> it's just incredibly vague. Some cities like New York, a lot of the restaurants have done away with tipping and I assume they just pay the waiter, like the server, what, what, what their, their due practice is. I, I don't have strong feelings about it either, either way. My, my feeling about it is that I just wish it were more straightforward, like who's getting paid what and from, from from who because you know for for a service person it it has pluses and minuses I suppose to to rely on tips sometimes you make more than you would uh, with the salary depending on the restaurant depending on your the night any given night of the week like a bartender you know can make quite a bit of money on tips that, that's another another person you have to tip is the bartender um, they can make quite a bit of money on the tip. I mean, they they spend a lot of time on you, and you know they're catering, they're, they're serving you, they're catering to you, and so your tip is essentially their payment. Um, I just wish it were more transparent, like to know how is this person getting paid. That's all I really want to know. Like, uh, because sometimes people people do do what's expected of them, and if they're they're getting paid for that from from their employer then I don't feel like a tip is necessary if they're getting paid what they're what they're due from their employer and they're going above and beyond then I'd like to tip them in addition to it but if they're not getting paid from from their employer what they are due then it's on me and I would like to pay them because I feel as though you know they need to be paid <laughs> I don't know it's confusing like I'm I'm confused right now uh, but yeah comment below on uh, on your thoughts on tipping, I think for waiters and, and waitresses and, and service people, it it can be hit or miss depending on depending on the line of work you're in and depending on depending on the day the the customers you know the crowd certain crowds you know can can be a little stingier than others and that's not that has to be anxiety provoking you know like well, it's a little. Uh, it's a little uh, up and down. So I'm here in Costco, and I don't know if you guys noticed this morning, I was wearing my new Carol Hawkman socks. 
O-M-G-G. Get these if you can. They're still on sale. Four pairs, $6.99. That is such a great price. They are, they are really comfy. And they look really cute with my Fabletics leggings. I'm not wearing them now because they wouldn't go with these socks, but, uh, excuse me, with these, sho with these shoes. But they, they are so comfy and so soft. And I am able to sleep with these on and my feet not get overheated. I'm really picky about what socks I can sleep with. Yeah, I'm like really persnickety with my, my footwear when I sleep. I can't have socks that are too warm, otherwise I get overheated in my sleep. But I don't like to sleep barefoot in the event that I have to wake up in the night and go to the bathroom. I like to have socks on my feet. And you might say, why not just put slippers by your bed? I don't like to put my bare feet in my slippers, I know. I'm an odd bird. <laughs> I have these Puma socks and they are fantastic. I recommend them. They are really good quality. I wear them uh, for running and they they last a long time. I've also had the Kirkland K-Bell no-show socks. They um, are comfortable, they're great socks, but if you wear them running, eventually, I would say after about six or seven months, they start to get a little, a little threadbare. Yeah, Ali Sedalis told me, uh, mentioned these in her one of her vlogs a long time ago in Costco, and I bought them because of her recommendation, and they have, she was right, they are excellent. Whatever this cool cell is, they, um, they're great for, they're great for um, sleeping at, wearing to sleep at night, they don't get too hot. And plus the moisture control is really nice, because the last thing you want is sweaty socks for tinnipedis onychomycosis or foot fungus. If you suffer from those conditions, you have to be a really militant about keeping your, your feet dry because those little dermatophytes love a moist, sweaty sock. <laughs> oh, I really like that. It's this barn door thing that you can put over your closet to give it a little zhuzh and it slides back and forth. It's $250. That's not a bad price for that, I guess. I don't know. Don't don't listen to me. I know nothing about home repair, you know, <laughs> DIY home renovation stuff. But that's really nice. Renin. So from Costco this week, I got another bag of the organic strawberry, frozen organic strawberries. I'm really enjoying these in the morning in smoothies. They taste really nice and they're just handy to have. Uh, and then I also got another uh, large bag of four one pound bags of riced organic cauliflower. This is, uh, I'm, I'm coming to like this riced frozen cauliflower. You guys know I love cauliflower. Pretty much any way, shape or form I can get it. And this frozen stuff is not the best, but it's, uh, it's grown on me. So got another thing of it. All right, shocker of the week. I did not get a bag of fresh and quick spinach. I don't know what got into me. Actually, I it, it wasn't looking as, as enticing as it usually does. And I mentioned this the other day, I have really been hankering for some romaine. So I got these cute little baby artisan romaines. I swear, they put put the word artisan on anything and it makes it somehow somehow sell some more. <laughs> but this is actually pretty good value and I thought they were really cute. So I have those. I also got a bag of these Green Wave Farms Organic Brussels Sprouts from Costco. I have purchased these in the past and they are rather delicious. And I wanna try putting them in the air fryer like you guys have seen me uh, do with the radishes and other vegetables. Uh, I imagine they'll come out similar to the way the radishes come out. We shall see. I also got a ba another bag of the Taylor Farm celery sticks. I love these uh, chopped up in soup and I like to just eat them plain. Uh, really, really gives my dental floss a run for its money though, that is for sure. And I am due for another pack of crunchy dried beet chips. And fortunately Costco has not, has not cut me off of the Voluptas. So they still have those in stock, fortunately. From Costco, I also got these uh, pomegranate seeds, the Juicy Gems. They looked really good to me. I know that you can easily uh, buy whole pomegranate and uh, like put it in water and it'll release the seeds and it's pretty easy to do and a better price. But uh, I I don't know, I haven't had it in a long time so I wanted to see if, 
if I would get if I would get the hankering for it, and if so, I'll start buying the actual the actual thing. But these seemed convenient and handy to, to uh, gateway me into the world of pomegranate, and I thought they would go really nicely with that rose rose uh, water that I've been jiving on. That and moving on to Kroger, I swung over to the bulk bin section because I haven't I haven't been shopping over in the bulk bin section in a while. I don't know. They stopped carrying uh, something that I liked at one point, and then I just started neglecting the bulk bins. But I went over there and got some raw unsalted uh, shelled pistachios. I thought that would be a nice combination. The rose, the pomegranate, the pistachio, and some sort of smoothie bowl. We shall see. And then I also got, uh, Kroger had these on sale. These blackberries are like 80 cents. Blackberries are always so expensive. And no joke, I will I will eat this in one one sitting after I wash it. <laughs> they don't last very long around me. I love blackberries, very good. I got four bags of radishes. These are really delicious in the air fryer. You guys have got to try that. All right, um, and then I got a red and green bell pepper, a yellow onion, and garlic. <laughs> this. This foursome here always reminds me of that 80s commercial with Jay Leno for Doritos where he would like take each of these ingredients and throw them into a paper bag and say some, uh, you know, little catchphrase. Oh my goodness, such, a, such, effective, such effective advertising. That commercial always, always sucked me in and made me want to, to chow down on Cool Ranch Doritos. Something about the vibrant peppers and the onion and the, the garlic, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds so good. Um, totally sold with the veggies. Just throwing them in the brown bag. I don't know what it was, okay. Um, now that I bored you to tears with that story, I also got, surprise, surprise, chayote squash, loving this stuff. And these were the only four chayote squash they had at Kroger. And, you know, they seem to be, they seem to be popular and going quick. So I got the last four. I got three heads of cauliflower this week. They're, they're doing this strange thing this week where they're kind of covering, the leaves are sort of hiding, hiding hiding the cauliflower. I don't know, I thought they, they looked slightly different. Like they don't have as substantial a woody stem, which is kind of convenient for chopping, chopping them off. Anyways, uh, I also got um, some turnips and two rutabagas, even though I'm not as as in love with rutabagas as turnips, they, they also were running low on, on turnips, so I got rutabagas as well. Um, okay, and then I also got another thing of blue diamond almond coconut uh, unsweetened almond milk. And this is a uh, plant-based vegan protein powder that I've had in the past and I really like. I don't consume this in, for any other reason than just kind of just, just as a food, I like the way they taste. I don't like, I don't rely on protein powders, in other words, for nutritional needs. I just consume them from time to time because I like them. Um, and I like them in smoothies, they're just convenient. So I got this, I've had it before, it is very good, and it's currently like four bucks cash back on Ibotta, so that was incentive, and it's on sale at Kroger. It's pretty good, it's like pea protein, and uh, like uh, flaxseed, Two scoops has 20 grams of protein, so uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. I recommend it. I also got a bar of unsweetened baking chocolate. Uh, this is convenient to have. You can sweeten it with stevia. It has zero grams of sugar and is uh, uh, pretty low in fat and calories, so I enjoy that from time to time as a way to get in the good stuff, something delicious. You know I love chocolate, dark chocolate. And I also got uh, some replacement seasonings that I'm running low on, uh, bay leaves, oregano, and cumin. So yeah, that is everything that I got this week. So yeah, that's everything that I got at Kroger and Costco. Kroger has all of their Valentine stuff out already and <laughs> I'm kind of feeling rather smug with my um, peppermint cocoa. Tuscany Candle because Tuscany Candle came out with their Valentine's themed candles with a pretty Valentine's label and they have a like chocolate um, mint one I think and it smells like like peppermint cocoa it just has a Valentine label to it and they also came out with uh, they come out they're the same scents they had last year they have like a a rose roses one and then a red hot like a one that's supposed to be like those little cinnamon red hots but it basically smells like their cinnamon candle that they have out all year so the valentine scents are nice but they're not super unique they also have one that um 
is kind of perfumey that I don't care for. So yeah, that was that was uh, fun to see. And then Costco was busy. They had a ton of samplers out. There was a dearth of vegan options though, as far as the samples. I had like it was like meat and cheese day, I swear. And so the crowds were really intense around the sample, around the little sample kiosks. It was every man for himself in there today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog today. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.